Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, and it is written, the just shall live by faith. Shall we stand for prayer? Our precious Father, we do thank thee and praise thee again yes. for another privilege of coming to thee this evening. May we feel thy presence. Uh, do come. Help each one of us, dear Father, for we're walking into eternity and we need thy divine help. Dear Father, may every part of this service glorify Jesus the Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to sing? Did you hear anything? <laughs> Are we ready to sing? Yes. Praise the Lord. Get your songbooks. He's supposed to ask me that. Good evening. Good evening. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, well, let's see. Joe Perez, would you stand up? Joe Perez. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Joe, normally I would, uh, I would ask you for a birthday song, but we're going to have to defer that one, okay? Just until the next service. Um, it's good to see the Robbins and the Ganyan family with us tonight. We, uh, we, were, we were grieved to hear the loss of uh, the recent loss of Sister Robbins. She was, uh, she was certainly a, a good saint, and uh, I, I had the privilege of dining with them in their home one time and found her to be a gracious host and a good cook, and, and we just uh, we praise the Lord to have known her. Uh, we're, we're sorry for the loss that she's made, but we rejoice that she's with Jesus tonight. And uh, we, we praise the name of the Lord. One day, one day we'll get to see her again, certainly. And, uh, and we understand that her favorite song was 251, Covered by the Blood. 251. 251.
praise the name of the Lord. Joe Perez, did you really think I was going to make you wait till next service? <laughs> it's your birthday. What's your song? Uh, 256. 256. Amen. <laughs> Makes all the difference. all the difference, doesn't he? Praise the Lord. No, we're not really alive until we come to Christ. And then we, did, then we find out what lo true life is like. Praise his name. 315 in your handle, 315. 315. I appreciate it so much, that, uh, that message the other day from Brother Ledger about sanctification, about how if you don't crucify the old man, he'll crucify you. It's such a such a timely message for this time. Praise God. 315, he abides, speaking of the Spirit. Holy Spirit of God.
Amen. It's a good thing that he abides. Amen. Peace. If you don't know what it is, get ready to jump in. Praise the Lord. Because he brings peace into the heart of men, women, and children. Praise his name. This evening hour, as we go to prayer, let's continue to remember uh, our upcoming camp meeting. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I got a lot of help at Sun City, so I'm uh, praying that I'll continue to get more help. I had a fellow tell me, he says, I got all Jesus that I need. I'm glad he did. I don't. I want more. Amen. So uh, let's remember those amongst us that need prayer. Continue to remember Brother Wooten, uh, Brother Lenhart, uh, some of these others that uh, we uh, uh, know very well that have lost loved ones. Uh, we all uh, don't particularly care for that, but it happens. Amen. You know what's nice to know? They're on the other side where they belong. Amen. Our whole focus as when we become Christians is to get before the throne of grace finally and praise God without any hindrance of the world. So let's remember these um, uh, loved one, uh, ones that have lost their loved ones. Let's remember Camp Freedom. It's going on right now that the Lord had blessed and undertake for them. Anybody have any requests out there? Me? All right. I have two. Uh, that with my ex-wife is an ongoing problem. I've seen my daughter once in the last six months now. And that was about a week and a half ago at her school. I went down to have lunch. Uh, my ex-wife has made it very, very clear that she has no intentions of letting me see Caitlin. But this is a woman that is very arrogant, a narcissist. Uh, I also have a request for prayer that the Lord could assist me in that regard and also assist me in building my faith. All right. Amen. Let's remember this. Amen. Okay. All right. Let's remember her husband. Unspoken. Uh, Joe Perez wants to be anointed this evening hour. Uh, but anointing isn't just for Joe Perez. It's for anybody that has a need. Uh, I would make the suggestion if Joe comes forward to uh, be anointed, any of those here that would like to be anointed, come forth as we go into prayer and uh, anointing Brother Joe. Donovan Amen. Donovan's got his hand up. <coughs> My best friend's older sister has been having trouble with cancer, battling cancer for the third time. Amen. Anybody else want to be anointed? Hey, got to be believe that God can heal come forward place your hands upon our brother when we're done with this everybody stand and we'll have a prayer and then uh, 
Brother Steve, you'll lead us to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father. Oh, sweet Lord, we have your we presence pray. tonight. I'm so glad you only found the presence of help, oh my God. God. Sin of God. 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 Lord, we pray tonight for Joe and all of that. Joe, dear Lord, you know, Father, what's going on in his life, what's happening in Jesus' whole body. We pray this evening, loving Father, as we stand in your hands and touching on your call to the elders and your point of the divine and weary old range for the prayer of faith to say the same. It's easy to allow to help me. Help us to have believing faith, trusting faith, knowing faith in your Lord. Faith is a great and much to see you to us. We pray tonight, Heavenly Father, now so do it. Jesus, say, now to the end, right now, we pray to the help you to pray. Now it's beyond words, you are cool, we're glad you're hearing. You have been here in our direction. Have your special way right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, again, 
Amen. We thank thee and praise thee for the privilege of giving to thy work as each one gives thee our Father. May they know that the work goes on because of their faith in their offering that they give. Blessed we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wife and I went to uh, Walmart today. I had a reason to be there, and uh, one young man approached me, and he wanted to sign me up in Uncle Sam's Club. <laughs> I told him, I says, I got everything I need in life. <clears throat> and as I walked away, I realized that I hadn't told the truth because I was in there after a little white pill that's keeping me alive. <laughs> <laughs> But it's nice to know when you get old enough that a lot of that stuff loses its attraction. And the closer I get to heaven, the whole mess of it's starting to lose its attraction. Praise the Lord. Amen. I wish I'd have learned this when I was young and a young man. I really do, but I didn't. Thank God he did save me. But uh, it's such a waste. But anyways, our dear brother is about ready to uh, bring us the message of God. And that he's laid upon him. I was reading for the Sunday school lesson that Joshua was in a place where God told him to take his shoes off. It was a holy ground. Well, uh, Moses heard the same thing. Almost identical situation. He takes his shoes off because he's in holy ground. We had invited a young man from India, Rakshananadam. Try to put that in your pocket. That's, a, that's his name. Uh, he was a preacher in, uh, in southern India. And when he came to our pulpit at the mission I was saved in, he took his shoes off. And I was a young Christian. I didn't really know a lot. I still don't. But I uh, asked him afterwards why. And he says, in our group, when you're behind the pulpit, this is holy ground. And we're to take our shoes off to be a reminder that it is holy ground and we're preaching God's word. Think about that. Now, Brother Jerome's not going to take his shoes off, but he is on holy ground, and he's going to bring God's word to you this evening. Good evening. Good evening. Brother Popa, 
You always take me to a place I don't want to go. <laughs> but I appreciate my dear brother. I appreciate my dear brother. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, that sounds much better. Sounds much better. What a joy it is to be in the presence of God's people. This is joy. It's an absolute joy. And uh, to be in the house of the Lord, it's, just, Amen. it's heavenly. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I come tonight, I come tonight want to, wanting to share something with you this evening. I gave Sister Foster just a little, a little uh, tidbit of, uh, of what I want to speak about tonight. And I just might as well share it with you right now as well. Uh, uh, the theme of this is going to be lesson from a garbage truck. And as sister was down there stuffing her face, that's when I told her uh, 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 my message. But, but it has nothing to do with sister. I just wanted her to turn uh, lobster red. That's why I said what I said. But uh, I, uh, I love her dearly. But, uh, but there are some things out there that... Uh, if we're not careful with, that we'll find ourselves <coughs> acting and, and responding and, and behaving like those that we don't want to act like. So, so that's in essence what this is, is all about. So I got one base scripture that I want to share with you tonight. And then I have a passage of scripture that I'm going to look at and expound upon to, to kind of tie all of this, this stuff together. And, and hopefully, uh, you'll be able to stay with me. Sister, you need extra help? Because I'll talk to you after, after church. You got that bewildered look. I'm speaking to you. No, that's okay. Relax, relax, relax. But if you, if you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> I, see, I see not too many people catch my humor, but that's okay. I'm going to use it every time so you get familiar with it. So you know when I'm just pulling your leg. Philippians chapter 4. Uh, verse number 8 is going to be my uh, base scripture. And I'm going to be referencing Philippians 1, 12 through 23 throughout the message tonight. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Brother Popa, would you pray over the red word? Our precious Father, again, as our uh, brother uh, begins to uh, talk about thy word and preach on it, dear Father, may each heart open up. But there's something special in every service, dear Father, for each and every one. Bless our brother in a special way. For we ask it in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 I got this illustration for you this evening. Lesson of the garbage truck. One day, I got into a taxi and, and we took off for the airport. We were driving in the right lane when a car suddenly sped out of an alley. My driver slammed on his brakes, skidded, and missed crashing into the other car by inches. The driver of that car stuck his head out of the window and he yelled at us. My driver just smiled and waved at him. Therefore, I asked, why did you just smile at him? That guy almost caused a wreck. Then he began cursing you. That was when my driver taught me what I now call the lesson of the garbage truck. He explained that many people are like garbage trucks. They run around full of garbage, full of frustration, full of anger and disappointment. 
as their garbage piles up. They need a place to dump it. And sometimes they will dump it on you. Do not take it personally. Do not take their garbage and dump it on other people at home, at work, or on the streets. Just smile. Wish them well and move on. What you pay attention to, what you dwell upon in life will generally determine the kind of decisions you make. Another illustration. One ship sails east and another west with the self-same winds that blow. Tis the set of the sail and not the gale which determines the way they go. The Apostle Paul gives us great advice in Philippians 4 and 8. Realizing that what so many are doing today is the exact opposite of what the Apostle was speaking about. But in Philippians 1, 12 through 23, Paul mentions some negative things that are going on in his life. Unpleasant circumstances, unreasonable people, and an uncertain future. And I think all of us here to a one can identify with these three particular categories. But Paul goes on to show that God was able to use those negative things in a very positive way. And in doing so, Paul is expressing to us the earnest hope that they might bound, abound more and more in knowledge and without offense to the day of Christ. So what the Apostle Paul is telling us, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what we do, and all our doing, be it in life, be it in death, we are to exalt Jesus Christ. We are to exalt Jesus Christ. Everything that we do should be done for the sake of Christ, for no other reason, for no other reason. And you might say, Jerome, but you don't know the pain that I'm in. You're right, I don't know. But God knows. And as Apostle Paul also teaches us, that God's grace is sufficient. It's sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient. No matter where you find yourself, God's grace is sufficient. That's why he died. That's why he was resurrected, to shower us with his grace, with his power, so that we can pick ourselves up and move on. To move on. Don't. Get bummed out about the negativity that comes into your life. Allow the power of God to flip that, to make it a positive, so you, so you will become a beacon of light to help someone else. But more importantly, that you will exalt Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus did was for his name's sake. So his name could stay high and lifted up. So all people and all nations, when they hear the name, they can look up and know that he is the almighty, the one true living God. That's the essence of Christianity. To exalt Jesus Christ. When we come into his service. That is our responsibility. That is our duty. That is our love. To exalt Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. And in chapter 1, verse 12. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance. Of the God, of the, of the gospel. Here Paul is telling us, 
Everything that has befalled him was done for the furtherance of the gospel so the gospel could go forward. So Paul also tells us we should glory in all situations, no matter where we find ourselves. We should glory in that. Jesus empower us to go through those things so we can exalt him through them. We should go around with a, with a scowl over our faces when there's aches and pains. We shouldn't have our feelings shown on our shoulders. No. In Christ, he gives us peace on the inside. He gives us joy on the inside. He gives us happiness on the inside. If that's on the inside of you, it should come out of you. And that's what you should display. No matter what state you're in. Now, I know we're not robots. I know that. But I believe what the word of God says. And we must, we must glory in all that we find ourselves in. We must exalt Jesus Christ for the furtherance of the gospel. For the furtherance of the gospel. We think we have troubles. How did your list of troubles compare to the list of troubles the Apostle Paul had? Were you ever shipwrecked? Beaten near to death? Were you ever bitten by, by a viper? Were you in prison many a times? Chained? Everything. Everything that the Apostle Paul encountered in his life was done for a purpose. It was done for a purpose. If it wasn't done for a purpose, then everybody could have had those same experiences. But no, everybody didn't. Paul had those. Paul lived through those. Paul worked through those for the furtherance <laughs> Of the gospel. And we may say Paul had a rough life. And he did. But he also had the hand of Jesus. The whole way through. And he endured. Everything. Why? To exalt Jesus Christ. To let the world know. That it was because of Jesus and only because of Jesus that he could endure what he was going through. If that's not power, I don't know what is. Amen. I don't know what is. Let's, let's, let's make our own list and compare it to Apostle Paul's list. And where do you fit on a scale of one to 10? 10 being the worst. Where do you fit? <laughs> one and a half, that's, that's right, one and a half. If that, if that. Paul says, I remember all these trials and, and I see that they have all served to advance the gospel. Not only to advance it, but to advance it more effectively. I can't, I can't speak to you about the goodness of God, the love of God, if I don't display that, if I don't show that, more importantly, if I don't live that. You can't. If I can't sell it, forgive me for these words, if I can't sell it, you won't buy it. We have to live Christianity. We have to live it. That's what Paul is telling us. We must live it to advance the gospel. We must live it 
to exalt Jesus. Got to live it. Got to live it. If you can't live it, you can't advance it. You can't exalt Jesus. You can't be a witness. You can't be a light. You can't be a beacon. But you know what you can be? The walking dead. That's what you'll be. The walking dead. Verse 13 tells us, So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. For 24 hours a day, he was chained to Roman soldiers. Every six hours, two new soldiers would come in and chain themselves to Paul. The soldiers are just doing their duty, making sure Paul would not escape or could not escape. They were being faithful. The same way Jesus wants us to be when we become soldiers, faithful. Chapter 4, verse 22 tells us, All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. So you might say, oh, Jerome, that's an obscure verse. No, it's not. The verse tells me that, that some of those soldiers became Christians. And how do you know that? Can you imagine being chained to the Apostle Paul for six hours? Every day, do you not believe that you wouldn't hear about Jesus? He was chained to two soldiers every six hours, 24 hours a day. And God, God made that time chapel. And Paul preached, preached. And those soldiers got convicted. Yes, yes. That's why we come to church, to hear the word, to be in the presence of the Holy Ghost, so we can get Holy Ghost conviction, so we can get converted. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. So Jesus Christ made it into the household of a pagan king, a pagan emperor. The Holy Spirit of God converted pagan soldiers because it was their duty, it was their job to be chained to a man of God. That alone lets us know that we are all called as witnesses to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you can't tell me there isn't a situation you come into that you can't witness. Every day you walk, there's an opportunity to witness. <clears throat> Paul was chained. He didn't use that as an excuse not to witness. He witnessed to what he had to witness to. We have roughly seven, eight guys living here. Boy, there's ample time to witness. Ample time to witness. And you don't have to talk to the same guy every day. It'll take you two and a half months to talk to everybody. And at the end of that two and a half months, you start in from the beginning and work your way through again. And by that time, we'll have a whole nother turnover. It'll be a brand new 50. Witness. Know what I'm doing right now? Witnessing. Telling you about the love of Jesus. Telling you about the power of Jesus. Sharing with you about Jesus. Growing in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus. That's what it's all about. Exalting Jesus. Verse 14. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, 
are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Paul is telling us because of his situation, there's those out there that are more encouraged. They don't have the fear now. They can go out and preach and teach with boldness. Seeing and knowing what God is doing for Paul, that God will do for them. Likewise, we too should stand before God's people with boldness, encouraging them so they can see what God is doing in our lives. He would also do in your life. Now, they may be facing difficult circumstances, but because of what they have seen in Paul, they are convinced that God will take care of them also. So I ask you this. What are you chained to tonight? Loneliness? Grief? Despair? And this is mine. An imperfect body? Declining health? How do you really feel tonight? How do you really feel tonight? And if you answer that question honestly, you will say to me, I don't know how I feel, but I know how I want to feel. And if you know how you want to feel, then you can say to yourself, then I need Jesus to feel the way I want to feel. Because there's an emptiness on the inside. There's a void. There's a chasm that everything that we do in the physical can't fill that void, can't fill that chasm. Only the Spirit of God can fill that void. The only the Spirit of God can shrink that chasm. As long as you're only outside of the ark of safety, that chasm expands. The distance gets greater and greater and greater. But we need Jesus to shrink that chasm. Unreasonable people, verse 15 deals with that. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. So Paul is saying, there are some people out there who were envious of him, who see themselves as his rivals, his competitors in preaching the gospel. What happened when people become envious? They try to tear you down. They point out all your negative things. They think by pulling you down, they're building themselves up. But fortunately, we are painfully aware that, that anyone who is in a position of prominence are also in position to receive accusation, to receive criticism, to receive ridicule. The same things Paul experienced. But Paul was writing in his letter, even as he was a prisoner of the Romans, he was there because of false accusation by the Jewish rulers. Listen to what he wrote in verse 18. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Paul, he says he has no choice. There isn't any other option but to rejoice. Why? Because Jesus is his example. When Jesus was walking to his death, Jesus thought more about his disciples than he did about himself. Jesus told his disciples, I leave with you my peace. The calmness 
the serenity, the boldness that Jesus walked to his death with. He told his disciple, this is what I leave with you. So when you find yourself in these circumstances, when you find trials that come up that you think you cannot handle, but you remember, you remember my peace. You remember my strength. You remember the power that I'm leaving you with. You can walk that road in boldness and without fear, rejoicing in whatever you have before you. Uncertain future. Verse 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Paul is facing trial in Rome. If found innocent, he shall live and he'll be free to preach. If found guilty, he will be executed. He was going to live or die. It's the only two choices he has. Verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Paul is saying, to, it does not matter if I should live or die. It doesn't matter. Jesus is going to be magnified regardless of what fate I take. What an awesome, awesome testimony that is. No doubt, no doubt in Paul's mind, no doubt in Paul's heart that he ran an excellent race, that he did all that Jesus asked him to do, all, with no hesitation. And he's confirming that to us, that no matter my fate, whether I live, I will magnify Jesus in my body. If I should die, I should die a good soldier for the sake of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What a testimony. What a testimony. Our lives, our bodies, our mouths, our eyes, our ears, our fingers, our feet, everything is to magnify Jesus. Everything belongs to Jesus. We are to magnify Jesus at all costs, at all times, be it life or be it death. Verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And if you're not a, a Christian, it's hard for you to understand and receive and to embrace that verse of scripture. Because while we're still in the physical body, it's going to be sorrow, it's going to be pain, there's going to be affliction, weariness, all the things that deal with life on earth. But to die is gain. And when we die, as a member of the body of Christ, all that suffering, all that pain, all that evil and all that madness that we find in this world no longer attaches itself to us. We're free. We're free. We're home with Jesus. That's our reward. That's our reward to be with Jesus. That is definitely a gain. So oftentimes we get caught up in circumstances, we get caught up in people and things that surround us that we just cannot see far enough ahead. However, 
When we take time to look and listen, we will begin to focus more and more on the positive. Because in Christ, we have a wonderful future. It may seem uncertain right now, but one day we will see him face to face and to be with him for all eternity. Lesson from a garbage truck. Let's be mindful. Let's be careful. Let's not pour out what you feel on someone else. On someone else. But in all we do, in all we say, is to be done to the glory of God. To the glory of God. And if you find your garbage truck being filled, it is at that moment that you should seek the face of Jesus. And Jesus will show you and tell you how to dump your garbage. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus is your waste management. Jesus is your waste management. So as we leave here tonight, let's think about where we're at, where we want to go, and where we ought to be. And if you're not where you ought to be, then you need to seek the face of Jesus. You need to seek the face of Jesus. Only Jesus can take you where you need to be. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. So if I have anyone out there this evening that needs to speak to Jesus, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. I thank you for your kind attention. Oh, man, I wasn't as winded as I thought I was. But seriously, seriously. We all need Jesus. There's no getting around that. There's no getting around that. And the sooner you come to Jesus, less space has to be filled in that chasm. Less space has to be filled in that chasm. And remember that it is not God's desire that any should perish but that we all should come to repentance. Jesus is there to bring you in. He won't force you. He won't force you. If he's knocking at your door, you must open. And if you open, he will come in and sup with you. While he's supping with you, you sup with him. He did say, let's reason together. Let's get together. We'll talk about these things. That way, he can show you his way. Praise God. Praise God. All hearts are clear. All minds are clear. Do I need to go through that one more time? All hearts are clear. All hearts are clear. You're dismissed.